In this video, let's, let's work through a limit proof for a rational function. So in this one, we're trying to prove the limit as x approaches 1 of 3 over 2x plus 5 is equal to 3 over 7. So again, we want to show that we can make 3 over 2x plus 5 minus 3 sevenths less than epsilon whenever the absolute value of x minus 1 is sufficiently small. So let's do our scratch work. Let's look at the absolute value of 3 over 2x plus 5 minus 3 sevenths. Let's combine those two fractions with a com which means we would have 21 minus 3 times 2x plus 5 over the common denominator 7 times 2x plus 5. Which means we would have 21 minus 6x minus 15 over 7 times 2x plus 5 in absolute value. Which would give us in the numerator inside absolute value 21 minus 6x minus 15 would be 6 minus 6x. Of course, 6 minus 6x, I can write as 6 times 1 minus x. And I can factor out the 6 as a positive and rewrite absolute value of 1 minus x as absolute value of x minus 1. And I can write the denominator as positive 7 times absolute value of 2x plus 5, which I know by our eventual assumption will be less than 6 delta over 7 times absolute value of 2x plus 5. All right, now, obviously what we need to do is get control of the 6 over 7 times the absolute value of 2x plus 5. In fact, what we really have is that last expression is 6 over 7 times delta times 1 over absolute value of 2x plus 5. So let's use usual trick. Let's suppose that delta is less than or equal to 1, which will imply that x minus 1 is less than 1 is greater than negative 1. Now, what are we trying to get control of? 2x plus 5. So, how do we want to do that? Well, we could go a couple different directions. We could add 1 now if we do that and add 1, you notice this will be 0, this will be x, this will be 2. Then if we multiplied by 2 and added 5, now multiplying by 2 would give us 0 is less than 2x is less than 4, and then adding 5 would give us 5 is less than 2x plus 5 is less than 4 plus 5. Now, we're trying to get control not just simply of absolute value of 2x plus 5, but of 1 over absolute value of 2x plus 5. In a previous video, we've seen this trick used before. These two inequalities say that the absolute value of 2x plus 5 is less than 9, and the absolute value of 2x plus 5 is greater than 5. Well, which one of those do we really want? If we reciprocate both, the first one says 1 over the absolute value of 2x plus 5 is greater than 1 ninth, and the other one says 1 over the absolute value of 2x plus 5 is less than 1 fifth. We want this one because it gives us an upper bound on 1 over the absolute value of 2x plus 5. So beginning from this step right here, we would have 6 sevenths times delta less
less than 6 sevenths times delta times 1 fifth, or in other words, 6 over 35 delta. Since this is a constant times epsilon, we want to equate this to 6, a constant times delta, we want to equate that to epsilon, excuse me, which means the delta we want to choose would be 35 epsilon over 6. Now you notice that's quite a bit larger than epsilon, but that's not a bad thing. We don't seek to be overly restrictive on how small the delta needs to be. So if we end up getting a delta that's actually much larger than epsilon, that's not a bad thing. It's actually less restrictive than the delta we end up finding in many other proofs. So we have our delta. Let's write our proof. Given epsilon greater than zero, let's choose delta to be the minimum of 1 and 35 epsilon over 6. Now just so you can look at the problem again, remember the actual limit was limit as x approaches 1 of 3 over 2x plus 5 equals 3 sevenths. So keeping that in mind, we're going to assume that 0 is less than the absolute value of x minus 1 is less than delta. What does that imply? It implies that the absolute value of 3 over 2x plus 5 minus 3 sevenths And again, replicating our work from above will be equal to the absolute value of 21 minus 6x minus 15 over 7 times 2x plus 5, which we know simplifies to 6 over 7 times absolute value of x minus 1 over absolute value 2x plus 5, which by our assumption is less than 6 delta over 7 times absolute value 2x plus 5. From our scratch work above, we know that delta is the minimum of 1 and 35 epsilon over 6. And also from our scratch work, we know that 1 over the absolute value of 2x plus 5 will be less than 1 fifth, provided our delta is less than or equal to 1, which it is, because we've chosen delta p, the minimum of these two numbers. So this last step, we can say that 6 delta over 7 times absolute value of 2x plus 5 is less than or equal to 6 over 7 times 35 epsilon over 6 times 1 over absolute value 2x plus 5, which is also less than 6 over 7 times 35 epsilon over 6 times, now, what was 1 over absolute value 2x plus 5 less than? It was less than 1 fifth. Okay, what does that all give us? Well, the 6's cancel. We know the 7 and the 35 make 5. We know the 5's cancel, and that does give us epsilon. Therefore, by the delta epsilon limit definition, we can say the limit as x approaches 1 of, just to remind you here and myself, 3 over 2x plus 5. is equal to 3 sevenths.